Hello lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video we're going to talk about maybe not DIYing your flowers. Now this may feel like a break away from some of the other content that I've done talking about DIYing flowers, but maybe you've watched some of those videos and you're like, I just don't know if this is the right feel for me. So this could be the affirmation, the confirmation, some sort of mation that you need to let you know that maybe DIYing florals isn't going to be the right move for you. If you're watching this and you're like, I, I don't even know what the right move is for me. Like, do I book a real florist? Do I DIY? Like, how do I proceed with my flowers for my wedding, right? I would recommend checking out this floral quiz. My team and I put this together. It's super short, really quick to get through, and will actually give you a specific resource that you can book at the end of it that will help take care of all of your needs and expectations for your florals on your wedding day. Is that a bold statement? Yes. But take the quiz. Trust me on this one. It's going to be immensely helpful for you. You may get to the end of this video and go, you know what, Jamie, I'm still going to DIY my flowers. And I'm like, listen, sis, I understand. I DIY'd mine. It's right for some people and it's not right for others. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Reason number one why you should not DIY your florals. It is so time consuming. It is so time consuming from conceptualizing your design, right? Putting together a Pinterest board, really honing in on what exactly you're looking for, figuring out the names are of those florals that you're looking for, and then practicing, because I do highly recommend that if you're going to DIY, you should do some practicing, right? You don't want to be trying this out for the first time on your wedding day. And then the actual timing of putting your florals together before your event, because obviously we're dealing with a live product here, right? Like, if you're DIYing florals, unless you're doing like sola or some sort of silk option, you are dealing with live flowers. That means it has to be done within the two or three days before your event. This is normally a very high stress time period in general, so to add on such a massive DIY sometimes is not the move for certain people, right? So if you are already DIYing a bunch of other things or you know that that last week is going to be packed full of stuff with people coming in from out of town, last minute details that you need to be taken care of, this may not be the move for you because item number two on why you shouldn't DIY your florals is you have to educate yourself because you can't really go into this blind. You need to learn types. You need to learn longevity, like how long can these flowers last in the conditions that your event is happening? Is it inside? Is it outside? Summer? Winter? When is this happening? How will it affect your florals? You also need to educate yourself on the cost because I've talked about this. I, I don't even know where I talked about this. Probably here on this channel, maybe on TikTok. Who knows? Um, but for example, sweet peas are absolutely delightful, right? They're named sweet peas for a reason. They're soft, they're wispy, and they're an absolute dream in any floral arrangement. But they're also extremely persnickety in any little bit of heat, right? Like they don't fare well in really warm conditions, but you may not know that unless you research that specific flower. Now imagine you wanna use five different kinds of flowers. How many of those are you gonna have to research to see if they will do well in your wedding environment? And real quick before moving on, if you are looking for really good floral dupes for very popular wedding florals, so they look pretty similar, but cost-wise they're gonna be a lot cheaper or a lot easier to find regardless of the season, I urge you to check out this download right here. We had our in-house florist put this together for you so you can really figure out what's gonna be the best bang for your buck when it comes to all of your floral arrangements. Reason number three why you should not DIY your florals is you don't have the experience and you may be listening to this and go Jamie I work in a flower shop then I'm not talking to you then this whole video doesn't pertain to you I mean maybe a few of the points do but you are leaps and bounds ahead of your counterpart who thinks that this just sounds like an easy DIY it's not you don't have the experience of working with different florals in different environments yes we kind of covered that with the education you also don't have the experience of the different kinds of materials that you're gonna be working with floral tape uh, are you working with foam? Are you using frogs? Are you doing mini bud vases? Are you doing giant centerpieces? How to make your floral bouquet stand out from the rest of those in your wedding party. A florist has gleaned all of these little tidbits of information over years of practice. And so many people, when they launch into DIYing their flowers, assume or hope that they will also gain this sort of education in a very short time period. And that's not always the case. So it's time consuming. You gotta educate yourself on the flowers. Nothing could really replicate those years of experience and working with these tools so you kind of got to figure that out on the fly. Reason number four, you got to practice. I talked about this earlier, but you definitely need to practice putting this stuff together. I already touched on this a few moments ago, but you do not want your first time working with florals to be two days before your wedding. It takes a while to get it right. It takes a while to figure out the shape, the flow. Do you want wild and asymmetrical? Do you want really, really tightly packed bouquets? Regardless of the style that you land on, it will take practicing to see if you can actually achieve this. In fact, that's what I would highly recommend if you are considering DIYing your flowers, please try practicing with a bouquet from the grocery store first. Go to Trader Joe's, go to your local Kroger store, which is 
Ralph's or whatever it happens to be in your area because I don't know why they can't have a national name. Go grab a pre-put together store bouquet and practice with it in whichever medium you're thinking about doing. It could be bud vases, it could be a bouquet, it could be boutonnieres, what have you. Reason number five why you might not want to DIY your flowers is recipes and purchasing. Let's say you've spent the time, you've educated yourself on different kinds of flowers, you've learned a little bit about what these products are that you're working with, whether it's foam or floral tape, but how do you know how many of each item to order? How do you know how many stems are in a bunch and how far that will stretch you? This requires some sort of mental gymnastics that you probably have not done in this capacity before. How many large flowers do you need? How many medium-sized flowers do you need? How many small flowers do you need? And then how do you make those numbers stretch across 10 centerpieces, five bridesmaids, bouquets, six boutonnieres including the groom, and your bridal bouquet. You can see how this can kind of start to feel a little bit stressful if you're not quite sure the numbers of how many you should be ordering. And then let's say you're just like blindly close your eyes and point and you're like that's the number I'm gonna order and I'm gonna make it work no matter what, right? How do you purchase these? Where do you go to find these? There are quite a few online wholesalers that are direct to consumer, like 50 Flowers, Flower Moxie, those are great options, and they do have some pretty excellent customer support if you are interested in going that route. So that could be an option that might alleviate this stress just a little bit, but unless you lean heavily into those services, you might be flying blind. Reason number six, storage and transportation. I know quite a few florists who don't have a professional studio. They work out of their own homes. One in particular happens to be one of my dearest friends in the world, she literally has an entire room that she dedicates to doing florals because it is so messy. I'm talking like leaves and stems and petals absolutely everywhere. She goes as far to like lay garbage bags down on the floor so she could just like pick them up and dump them afterwards because stuff just gets everywhere. So not only do you need the space, I guess that kind of falls into storage, uh, but then you need to figure out how to keep these florals cool so they look good enough for your wedding day. This girl, I swear to you, cranks her air conditioning so hard that sometimes her husband has to walk around in a puffer jacket to maintain a non-hypothermic body heat. This may not be a problem to you. Your house may already be as frigid as Antarctica. I'm not entirely sure, but if you have really bad insulation in your home or can't seem to get it under 72 degrees, you may be looking at very quickly wilting flowers no matter how much preparation you've done to get here. And then afterwards, you need to figure out how you're going to transport them from your home or wherever you are putting these together to your event space. You may think that it's going to be astronomically cheaper, but that's not always the case. And then who's going to do the setting up for you? This could be as simple as placing a centerpiece in the middle of your table for your reception. This could be as easy as delivering the boutonnieres to those in your wedding party that are wearing them, passing out the bouquets, etc. But if you want to have any sort of like hanging installation or arbor piece, who's going to be putting that in place? I know many florists who will spend easily 20, 30, 40 minutes on really perfecting your ceremony arch piece because things may have moved or shifted in transit as to be expected and they need to kind of be like zhuzhed up on the spot. So you need someone with an artistic eye to be able to fix larger and or more elaborate installations at your event. And ideally, it's not gonna be you because you're busy getting ready for your wedding. And lastly, reason number seven, it's stressful. Like, clearly I've expressed a couple things that might lead you to believe that it's stressful, but this still deserves a spot on the list. From putting together the recipes, to ordering, to receiving and processing these florals, and then putting them all together at the last minute, not to mention, you should not be doing this on your own. If at all possible, you should be enlisting the help and services of the loved ones around you. So it's not just stressful for you, it's stressful for them. What if you bring people in and they're actually really not good at this and then you have to redo everything that they just did? Or they're expecting to come over and hang out with you and be all relaxed before your wedding day and now you're throwing them into 48 hours of floral servitude. Now I say all of this and I DIY'd my flowers. I would not take it back. I only ended up spending about $220 on my flowers from Costco. So if you've made it to the end of this video and you're like, none of that bothers me, it didn't bother me either. Until I got to the last few days and I was super, super, super stressed out. I didn't anticipate that. I wish someone had told me about that sooner. Would it change my decision? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I would have just been more mentally prepared to handle this DIY. So maybe you listen to all this and you're like, Jamie, I'm still going to DIY my flowers. Girl, you do you. I have more power to you. I just hope that learning and hearing all of the, like, the downsides of DIYing your florals will give you a little bit of perspective and a little bit of caution moving forward. So that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you, if, if you, <laughs> I was about 
say I hope you feel encouraged, but this wasn't a very this wasn't a very encouraging video. I hope you feel educated and equipped to make a really good decision for you and your engagement and your wedding day. If you like the video, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. And until next week, bye guys.